So let's get started. So for the next hour shared together, can't wait, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Outlook as well as Office 2013 and the schedule of migration. Talk about all the sorts of things that you need to do before as well as after your migration. We're going to look at all three different versions of Outlook. That's right, there are three of them. Can you believe it? And also, because uh, we're trying to take care of you, we want to make sure that you know where to go once you've gone live to make sure that you have everything you need. So I'll show you where you can find some resources as well as who to call whenever you need help. And this is a road show, so we will go for a ride. Get it? Are you tired of waiting? I didn't put these. I didn't put these together, but it's pretty funny. Uh, so here are some puns as we go. So as you guys all know, Outlook is coming. And what I want everybody to realize is that Outlook is more than just email. In fact, it's going to be a lot of what you had in GroupWise and so much more. So uh, it's going to include your contacts, your calendar, as well as tasks and many other things that Outlook can do. Again, I'm only going to be able to show you a few of those things today, uh, but we do have classes and I'll outline where you can go to get that information. Now, if you don't know when you're migrating, don't worry, we have you covered. As you know, uh, the migration schedule for Outlook is a tiered approach, so we're going to be doing uh, April 29th and May 20th moving forward. I was part of that April 15th transition, and so uh, we're living in a world of coexistence, meaning that some people are on GroupWise and some people are on Outlook, and that can have a tendency to have a few headaches attached with it, but I promise you once we get through all this, it will be fantastic. So if you didn't know your date, now you do, and I'll show you another place where you can find those migration dates if you need to. So let's start your engines. What's really nice about this uh, push of when you actually migrate, you're going to get a couple of things. Uh, one is Microsoft Office 2013. So if you haven't been upgraded yet, get ready to live. You'll also get your Microsoft Office 2013. Don't anticipate that many changes. But there are a few things aesthetically and some other functionality that Microsoft Office will offer you. And of course, the build, the BJC Institute for Learning and Development has classes around all of those Microsoft Office products. Additionally, one of the big questions I get is, hey, we're going through this migration. Will I still have my GroupWise Messenger? And the answer is absolutely. You'll have your GroupWise Messenger throughout this transitional period. Once we're finished, towards the end of May, GroupWise uh, Messenger will go away and will replace that with Cisco Jabber. The really cool news is that you can actually have Cisco Jabber today. I have it. It's fantastic, and all you have to do is put in a request through the uh, through the request catalog. So uh, you can find all that information online. Otherwise, that's pretty exciting. So be, beyond Outlook, you'll also receive these two things in the very near future. All right, so the sort of things that we need to do to get ready, and one is that you're going to get ready, and the fact that you're already on this webinar means you're steps ahead of everyone else. And I want to remind you that throughout this process that uh, I definitely don't have all employees from BJC, or at least I don't think so, on the line. So that means that many of your coworkers may not be aware of some of the information that I'm going to share with you today. So I encourage you to share often, share all the time. Let people know what's going on. Additionally, I'm sure many of you have probably been through some sort of application change like this before, be it an EMR, be it uh, maybe you moved from somewhere where they actually had Outlook previously. But what happens with these application changeovers is there are problems that just happen. So some of those are expected and we're aware of them. Those are fantastic because we are aware of them and I'm going to make you aware of them as well today so that way you're ahead of the game. But the downside is there are some times where there's just unforeseen things that happen and that's the worst part about these transitions. And so as part of that I'm going to ask that you have some patience with it. I know it can be frustrating. Change is hard. Uh, but once we get through this, it's going to be pretty good. And the last little thing is because I am with the build, I'm going to encourage you guys to be lifelong learners, meaning that you can use this thing called the Internet. What? You can find all sorts of information online regarding Outlook. So we're obviously not the first people to, our first organization to use Outlook. So you can find plenty of information out there available to you. And even better than that, we have information specific uh, for BJC for you as well on our build website, which I will demo today. And again, once it's finished, well, this says it will be great, but I'm telling you, once it's finished, it's going to be okay because it's email. I don't know anybody that's that excited about email, and that's what this is. So don't be 
scared, don't be overwhelmed. So when it comes to logging in, this is going to be slightly different than what you're used to with GrooveWise. And the first bit is about your ID. So your ID to log in will now be your network ID, your three letters, your four numbers, followed by at BJC.org. So that's a pretty big username. So for me, that's NRC0519 at BJC.org. But since I've gone through the transition, uh, I found that I haven't had to type that in every single time. So you hopefully will only have to do that once. And then your password to get logged into Outlook will now be the same as your network password. So whatever you use to log into your devices, your desktop, your laptop, whatever it is that you're using that's BJC issued, it's going to be the same password. So eventually we will have one password to rule them all. We're slowly moving that way. So that's good news. One less thing to remember, right? So uh, that's how we're going to log in. Now the day that you actually go live, that's going to happen on a Friday, and we are going to uh, make your migration uh, take place on that Friday evening around 6 o'clock. So you can anticipate seeing some changes around that time. During that time on Friday evening, what's going to happen is your GroupWise access will be removed. So you will no longer have access to GroupWise. It will be gone. Uh, instead, you will then get Outlook pushed to your devices. Now, it's going to happen over the weekend, so it's going to take some time, but Outlook will get pushed, and the great news is that during that time, if you don't have access to Outlook on your device for work, you do have access online, and that's through this thing called OA. So OA stands for the Outlook Web Access. So if you're used to typing out uh, webmail.bjc.org, and that's how you check mail from outside of uh, the agency, you'll now type out outlook.bjc.org, and it's going to work the same way, only better, because I'm going to argue that the Outlook version that's online is so much better than the GroupWise version. You're going to love it, especially if you use a phone. I can't wait to tell you about that. The phone is fantastic. Uh, and then the last seven days of your mail and appointments may take up to 48 hours to migrate. That sounds kind of like a bummer, but uh, so far the transitions have been taking place and it's working out really well. So uh, the way that the priority is placed is that your oldest mail will come over first, your newest mail will come in last, meaning that if you really want to keep track of any emails you've received over the last seven days, it may be a good idea to copy and paste those into a Word document or something like that so you have access to them. But again, our experience has been that uh, those mail items will migrate and it's going to be okay. And then finally, during that entire process, if you're using OA, you can still send new mail as well as receive that mail. And I'm going to encourage you to use OA over your migration weekend. I should mention I've heard a lot of people kind of jump on the line as we've got started. Uh, so if you have questions, again, I have everybody on mute for uh, just good times purposes. And if you want to chat with me, that's how you're going to ask questions. So you can chat with me at uh, Nick Carson. So I'll be there somewhere in the list, and you can find your chat button in the upper right corner. All right, so again, that migration will take place over the weekend, so remember work-life balance. Leave your devices at work. I'm going to tell you that that's going to be your best experience. If you do have a device that, you know, maybe you work remotely, that push will still take place if you're a VPN into the system, uh, but it may take a little bit longer. So I encourage you, if you have the ability to leave your device here, you're probably going to have a smoother process. But... I can tell you from experience that I did mine while from home and it worked out just fine. So don't get too stressed out about that either. I'm going to show you where you can find this migration details handout, but that's really going to help you get ready. Uh, you can find that online, and again, I'll show you the exact location. But on this handout, I'm going to encourage you to track it down, print it off, and really take a close look at it. Because on here, you're going to find all the things that you can expect to happen as you go through your migration. I've slowly started calling this the, oh, man, worksheet, because this outlines all the things that might make you frustrated. Or you might go, oh, man, if you didn't know about it. But the good news, the great news, is that all of your email messages, folders, calendar items, frequent contacts, distribution lists, and tasks, that's a lot of stuff, will migrate. You're not going to have any problem with any of those items. So those are all going to migrate when you make the switch. On the other hand, we have these uh, six or seven things that will not. So one of those is that appointments and meetings are disconnected. And you're thinking, Nick, what the heck does that even mean? So let's say, for instance, prior to my migration, that I set up an appointment for Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. So as the creator of that appointment, I send it out to uh, five or six people. We go through the migration, come in on Monday, and I think, ah, you know what, Tuesday morning, that seems a little early at 8. Let's change it to 9. 
if I were to change that appointment after I've made the migration from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock, it's going to look great on my schedule. The downside is that it's disconnected with everybody else's. So if I make the change, it's not going to update everybody else's calendar. What a bummer, right? Oh, man. So the workaround for this is that if you do need to change appointments after your migration, you're going to need to send out an email to everyone to ask them to remove those items from their calendar and then send out a new appointment or meeting. Again, that sounds like a headache, but it's not that terrible. Again, all of your appointments will migrate over. They'll just be disconnected. The next piece on here is that re reoccurring appointments and meetings are not linked. And that's kind of a bummer. So if you had a bunch of reoccurring appointments, say, for the next year, and suddenly you wanted to change all of those appointments, unfortunately, they will not all change. So what happens is that if you were making them recurring in group-wise, we make the migration, they are no longer linked, meaning they're in your Outlook calendar as individual appointments. So they're all going to carry over. They're just going to be individual appointments, so you'd have to individually change every single one of those if you wanted to make a mass change. So what I would recommend is that prior to your migration date, I might cancel those reoccurring appointments, wait for your migration to take place, and then resend those uh, those reoccurring appointments. And the good news is that once you're in Outlook and you set them as a reoccurring, you can change them all day long. They'll change on everybody else's calendar. This is just for the migration. For those of you who love your categories and colors on your calendars, I've got sad news. Those also will not migrate. So you're going to want to make sure to grab that information prior to your migration. Uh, I like to think of this as everybody's HGTV moment, that this is where you can upgrade your color palette to 2016. How exciting. Uh, to make it easier on you guys, though, what I would say is if you don't know how to do a print screen, this would be a great time to grab a pen because I'm going to walk you through how to do that. To do a print screen uh, and basically capture the image that's on your screen right now, there should be a button on your keyboard that says capital PRT capital SC, so print screen, PRT SC. If you press that button once, what it does is take a picture of the image that's on your laptop or desktop right now, and it saves it to the clipboard. Then you can open up a Word document or any document you want to put this thing in, and then do Control V for pasting, or right click and choose paste, and that's going to paste the picture of the screen grab that you got. That's a really fantastic way of getting through some of this uh, stuff to get ready really quickly. So if I want to grab my categories and colors, I can just grab a print screen, paste it into a document, and then I have it for reference. That will just come in as a picture. So again, categories and colors will not migrate. Next thing on here is that folder rules don't migrate as well. So if you have vacation rules, et cetera, those are not going to carry over. Again, you could do your print screen. More than likely, you probably have a bunch of rules in there that you don't necessarily use, so it might be a good time for cleanup. But again, you want to make sure to capture this information prior to your migration. Next, and maybe the biggest bummer on this list, in my opinion, is that proxy access does not migrate. Ugh. That means that if you have access to calendars or rooms or those sort of things, those will not migrate. So you definitely want to make sure that you grab a list of all the places that you have uh, proxy and people that you have proxy access to. I'll talk briefly about how you can gain that access back when we get to our calendars and other things, but ultimately uh, make sure you grab that information. Uh, last couple on here is that signatures do not migrate. So if you love your signature, it's just as easy as maybe sending it to yourself or copying and pasting it into a Word document. And finally, if you have any delayed messages that are going to be sent after your migration, you're going to have to resend those delayed messages. They won't carry over as delayed messages. So just be mindful of that if you're in the habit of sending delayed stuff. All right, so that's your migration details handout. On the back of that sheet, Oh, I should also mention, on the front of the sheet, you'll have uh, to the right, you can see a green and a blue blob over here. Uh, those are actual checklists, and I would encourage you to treat them as checklists to ensure that you've done everything that you need to do before as well as after your migration. And again, I'll show you where you can find this form online in a moment. On the back of that sheet, we have the migration details differences. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. You can see there's a whole bunch of different ones available to you. Uh, the ones that I definitely want to cover uh, within our brief time today is this uh, idea of uh, checking if somebody read your message or not. I know. 
I absolutely love this feature. So if you ever use that properties to find out, did somebody read my email or not? And you see it marked as unread. And, oh my gosh, they haven't even opened my email yet. Or maybe, maybe even worse, you saw that they emptied your email. Ugh. Well, I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is that that functionality is definitely going away. So we can no longer spy on our coworkers. Man. But I'm going to argue that the reason that you are looking to see if a person from your team or someone read your email is because you want to know if they read it or not. And the downside of GroupWise is that all that tells you is that they opened your email. It doesn't mean that they read it. In Outlook, on the other hand, and this is the good news, the Outlook option for this is that you can request a read receipt. So the person reading your email will get a pop-up that says, hey, so-and-so has uh, requested a read receipt. And they'll say yes or no, indicating that they've actually read or have not read your email. So the good thing here is that now you can actually confirm if someone has, in fact, read your email as opposed to opening it and marking it as unread. Anyway, uh, so you want to definitely take a look at that migration detail differences. And again, I will show you where to find that in one second. And the pros far outweigh the cons when it comes to all of these changes. I mentioned we're going to look at all the different versions today, and here they are. And this is where it gets somewhat confusing, so I hope I don't lose you guys when I'm talking about this. But there are three versions. The first one is if you have your own device. So if BJC issued you a laptop or a desktop and it's yours, and maybe other people use it occasionally, but ultimately it is yours, then you're going to be using what we call the client version of Outlook. If you are on a shared device, so if you're on a shared PC, and multiple people are using that same PC in a department or something like that, then you'll be using what we call OA, which I mentioned earlier is our online web access for Outlook. And you'll access that through outlook.bjc.org. That has further complications here. So that means that if you've ever gone to a uh, computer lab and you wanted to check your email, normally you just went on there and logged into GroupWise, right? That is not going to be your process uh, after you've made the switch to uh, Outlook. Instead, what you'll do is type out outlook.bjc.org and you'll use the online version. And I can tell you from experience, I absolutely love the online version. In fact, I'm almost ready to just use that instead of the client. So if you're freaked out about that, don't worry. The online version is kind of fantastic. And then finally, you have your phone option. If you have a BJC-issued phone, smartphone, uh, your experience isn't going to change at all. As far as I can tell, you're not going to have any differences because you're still using that interface that's found on the iPhone. On the other hand, if you have a personal smartphone, uh, your experience is going to be so much better. I can't even express how much I love the online version on your phone for Outlook. It's pretty great. So how about that? Three different ways to check your mail. Good stuff. I should also mention that if you do have a BJC-issued smartphone, you're going to need to do a little bit of work to make sure that it's ready for Outlook, and that is going to be by actually changing uh, some of the settings in Mobile Iron. If you're thinking, what is Mobile Iron? I promise you, you have this app somewhere on your BJC issued phone, and what you'll do is go to Mobile Iron, open it up, and go to your settings, and you're going to check for updates, and then you have to re enroll uh, in the process to make sure that you have access to Outlook. And that sounds like a little bit of work, and I guess at some level it is, but it's going to be worth your time and effort. I can tell you from experience also, uh, when we made our transition, what we found is that sometimes just that re-enrolling didn't work out as well as we'd hoped. So I would encourage you, if you're really struggling, you might just want to delete the app completely, re-download the app, and then register that way. So there's a couple of different options, and uh, we'll talk about it in a moment. And I just noticed that I have a chat pop up, so I'm actually going to take a second. Will Outlook app work on personal phone? Uh, I can tell you the official message is that you should not be using the app on your phone. Um, you can use your browser, but from what I can tell, the app might work, but I'm encouraging you not to use it, not only from uh, the perspective of HIPAA and some other things that are making us kind of nervous around that, but also uh, I've heard it's had a few buggy issues with it. I can tell you from experience that the browser version is fantastic. It's probably even better than the app, but that's just me, uh, so there you go. If you have that non-BJC phone and you want to have mail natively, so for instance, you click on your mail icon on your phone somewhere, uh, you can request mobile iron and then you'll have that. But as I mentioned just a second ago, that OA on your browser is great. It's great. Can't even say it enough. It's great. All right, let's get on with it here. So if you did want that mobile iron for your um, 
your personal phone, you can request that uh, through the service catalog. If you need help, and all of us need help from time to time, especially during these times of change, I'm going to tell you that you can call the help desk. Yay! So that means you can call that 362-4700 number. Press option 6, I believe is what it is, uh, and you will get a one-on-one -on -one support for Outlook. So there's some good news. We also have bjclearn.org backslash capital Microsoft capital help, and you'll definitely want to capitalize those. I found that you, you struggle if you don't. Uh, that's going to be all the stuff that you want to know about Outlook and so much more. I'll show you that in just a moment. You're obviously here for the roadshow, so good stuff. And as I said before, you're, you're not the only one who works here. So make sure you share this information with your coworkers. And then finally, if you want to get a black belt, if you want to be a ninja in all things <laughs> Outlook, you can do that by attending our overview classes. Those are typically on Thursdays and Fridays. And they're three hours, and you're going to get a lot of good information. But if you feel like you don't even have time for those three-hour courses, we even provide you the manual from that class. So if you just want the manual, you can get that too, and you'll find that on bjclearn.org backslash Microsoft Help, and I'll show you that as well. Uh, if you need to sign up for classes, you can do that through Cornerstone, or you can do it through our website via one click, or maybe, maybe a couple clicks. But either way, it's pretty good. So finally, we are going to take a ride. I'm going to show you the client version for the most part today. I'm going to save about 15 to 20 minutes for the OA version, but here's what you're going to find. If you're, find, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, I need to see OA, and that's the one I'm going to be using, uh, don't worry. The client version will do a very good job of showing you what happens in OA because they are very similar. I mean, they are very similar. All right. So before I say let's go, I'm going to check in with my chat, make sure anybody who needs questions, we can get them answered. Uh, so, Lori, do we re-enroll the mobile iron now if we have BJC phone or wait until the Outlook conversion? Great question. I would encourage you to wait uh, because what it will do is then keep you from seeing your group-wise messages. So I would wait till after you go through the uh, migration, either over the weekend or even better, Monday. Give that a try. Good question. And as I mentioned, you can still check your mail on the browser on any of those phones. So if you can't get the mobile iron thing to work uh, after your migration, you can still check your email on the browser on your phone by typing out outlook.bjc.org. Great questions. Keep them coming. I'm going to move on. So let's take a look at some of those resources that I mentioned before. All right. So if I'm looking on this, you can see this is bjclearn.org backslash Microsoft Help. And where I want your eyes to focus is over here on this link called Outlook in the upper right corner. When I click on the Outlook link, that's going to bring me to all things Outlook. So on this page, we have the migration schedule, the handouts. We have the roadshow schedule. So if you love roadshows, you can come back. And if, same thing for webinars. If you need to practice, we offer you time at the BLI to do that. We have our overview classes as well. If you can't get enough of this voice, or you want to see this guy in action, uh, I've created some videos for you guys to watch as well. So uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit show you where you can find some of these things. So here's a migration schedule that gives you all of the migration dates. Your handouts. What I would encourage you to do is take a look at these three at the very least. So this client shows you all the directions of the things that I'm going to show you today on the Roadshow, as well as the OA version of those items uh, uh, the migration details handout that I was mentioning in the pr presentation earlier, that's where you'll find that. If you love clickbait, here's the Outlook top 20 features. You can find all the 20 coolest things about Outlook. If you don't have enough time to attend those classes, don't worry, there is your manual. And then finally, if there are questions that I struggle to answer, uh, what we do is we compile those into this FAQ form online. And so there's anything that we haven't been able to answer in our uh, road shows along the way, you can check in and look at the FAQ and that answer should be living in there. All right, so here's your road show schedules. Here's the lab times. These are your overview classes. What I love about this link right here is that if you click sign up now, it's going to bring you to log into Cornerstone. Once you log in, it's actually going to search for that class automatically. So you don't have to go looking for the class. It'll just bring you a list of options of the class available to you. And then finally, as I mentioned, here are our awesome videos that will walk you through everything that I'm talking about today. So if you're thinking, oh my gosh, Nick, you're talking way too fast, you can pause me here and you can watch these things. So we're going to cover mail, we're going to cover appointments and calendars as well as people and tasks in both Outlook as well as OA. All right, so there are all of your awesome resources. I'm going to minimize this. And finally, finally, let's actually take a look at Outlook. So this is the client version of Outlook, 
And what you'll notice is that, oh my gosh, it looks just like any other Microsoft Office product. That's because it's a Microsoft Office product. And the functionality here and the customizability is outrageous. So I'm going to show you all of that as we go along. So across the top, you're going to see some pretty familiar things, right? So here are all of our tabs. You also have a ribbon with a bunch of options within it. On this page right now, I'm looking at my mail. And I'm telling you that I had to set this up because this is not the way mine looks today. But I want to show you all the different options and views that you have available to you. So over here I have all of my folders. I have my contents pane. And then I also have my preview pane. So whenever I click on an email, it's going to highlight and show me that email in the, um, the reader view or that reader pane. Here's where this application is going to differ from what you've probably seen in other uh, Microsoft products is that across the bottom I'm going to see mail, calendar, people, and tasks. Those are the applications within the application. Sounds like a matrix sort of thing. Uh, but this is right now I'm on mail. If I click on calendar, you see that it's going to bring me to my calendar. I can go to people. Those are my contacts. And then finally I have tasks. So we're going to navigate across all of these today. If you're a shortcut person, I can hold down Control, press 1, and that brings me back to Mail. Control 2, Calendar, Control 3, People, Control 4. I think you're getting the idea. And you can see just how much faster this is uh, than GroupWise in general. Hopefully I didn't give you a headache there. But I can jump around very quickly if I use my shortcuts. Now, as I mentioned, this is not how I have my mailbox looking today, so I just want to show you all the different view options that you have available to you. For me, I like to be pretty lean, and I don't need all of this stuff to look at. So I'm going to show you some of the options. I can collapse this folder. I'm going to shrink up some of my space. I can move this however the heck I want. So if I want to see more of my contents pane or more of my reading pane, I can do that. To change any of the other view options, I can go up to this View tab. And from here, this is where you can see your folder pane, your reading pane, and your to-do bar. So believe it or not, I can even add more stuff to this screen if I want to. The to-do bar will show me my upcoming calendar items. Uh, the, the people will show me all of the different uh, contacts that I can have, as well as my tasks. I can have all of those things visible. So you can see you can make your screen pretty cluttered if you want. For me, again, I don't have any of these things visible. I have it looking quite a lot like what GroupWise looked like before. So I remove my reading pane, and there you go. So you can make this look however you want, but for roadshow purposes, I want to make sure that you guys get a chance to see all the different options that are available to you. So I'm going to expand all of this back out so you can see what's going on. So let's actually jump into writing an email. But before I do, I actually see that I have a question. Uh, from Laurie again, will the RSA key process to remote in from home remain the same after Outlook changes? Absolutely it will. In fact, a lot of the rules around any of that access will remain the same. So your, your VPN will remain the same. Uh, the way that emails delete, so you know how they, they drop off after about six months or whatever it is, uh, that will continue to happen. Uh, your archive folder will work in the same way. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Any number of things that we're used to having right now, like if you had to send a confidential email outside of the agency, that process is the same as well. So all those things will remain the same. So good questions. Keep them coming. Okay. So let's actually get into how you send an email. So I'm going to return back to my Home tab. To do that, if you're a shortcut person, you can do Control-N or Control-New, or you can click on New Email up here in the upper left corner. When I click on that, the message window will open. I'm going to expand this so everybody can see it really well. And again, I have all these options across my ribbon. In the two box, if I start typing out right now, so I'm typing out my name, you're going to see that my name automatically pops up. That's because I've been using this program for a while. That's not going to happen right away. But once you actually get your frequent contacts, those names will start appearing much the same way they did in GroupWise. If I were to press Enter right now, you'll see that my name gets inserted. And what I really want you to see is that it's underlined. So here's kind of the stressful thing about getting started with Outlook is that it doesn't recognize those names right away. So let's pretend, you can see my name is popping up below, let's pretend that's not actually popping up. When you first get started with Outlook, that's exactly what's going to happen. That, that option down here is not going to pop up. It's just going to have the name. And you have to go through this process called check names. So up here under names, you'll see I have the option for check names. The keyboard shortcut, which I would encourage you to remember, is Control K. If I click on check names, you'll actually have it search the directory for the name and then it will underline your name. And that's going to be the directory for anyone you have in there as contacts, et cetera. It's going to look for those. 
But again, once you start using the system, it's going to recognize those people you email all the time. So for instance, I email Kristen, I email my boss Christy, I email uh, some of my other coworkers. You can see their names are automatically popping up as soon as I start typing out the letters. So for a little while, it's going to take a second, um, but eventually uh, you'll get these names where they pop up. And what's even cooler than that is that the functionality of some of these things Right now, Melissa is actually on FMLA, and it tells me that. Isn't that cool? So there's all kinds of cool things that are going to be in here that are kind of Easter eggs, uh, and I'll try to highlight some of those as we go along, but there's so much functionality with Outlook that's super cool. Uh, closed, uh, closed captioning. <laughs> Carbon copying and blind copying works the same way. The difference with this, though, is that blind copying, copying does not come over automatically. You'll actually have to go to Options and choose Blind Copy and put that in if you need it, as well as your From option if you need those. So you'll have to do that once. Otherwise, once you do it the first time, as you guys saw, it pops in there every time moving forward. All right, uh, get ready to be impressed because I am one of the best typers in the world. There's my subject. <laughs> Here is my body, all right? What's really neat about this is the functionality for changing the way you want your views to look. So, uh, for instance, if I want to change any of this message, I can use this basic text area. But if you go to Format Text, there's so much more. In fact, it looks just like Microsoft Word because I can change all the different styles. I can insert things just like Microsoft Office allows you to do or Microsoft Word allows you to do. I can put it in a box. I could even draw. Yeah, that's right. I can draw. Not to say that anybody ever needs to do any of that. I just want to highlight just how high functioning this can be and how much uh, detail and things that you can put into your emails if you wanted to. Now across the top, you can see that we have the ability to attach items. Obviously, you can click and drag to bring those in here as well. You may have noticed that my signature came over here by default. I set that up to do that, but what's really cool about Outlook is that I can have multiple signatures. So I can have an in-house signature, I can have one that's sent out-house. It doesn't matter, you can have as many signatures as you want. So that's kind of a cool function. Throughout the system, you're going to find this option for follow-up. I love this, I've been using it since we made our transition. What follow-up does is say, hey, I'm going to remind you that you have something to do depending on when you wanted to want to do something about it. So I could have it remind me to do something later today, tomorrow. I can even set it up to be custom, whatever the heck I want it to be. I can set importance as well as high and low. So that's just some of the things that you can do when it comes to emailing. Some of the even higher functioning, cooler things is that if I go to options, there's this option for use voting buttons. Like what? So let's say that you guys can't figure out where you want to go to lunch. I don't know, that seems like a silly example, but you can send out an email that has people, uh, gives people the opportunity to vote for certain things. The responses to those votes are going to be found in your sent email. So you have to go back in and find your sent email, but all those responses will be found there. It's kind of cool. Additionally, as I mentioned, we can no longer spy on our coworkers. We can't see if they read your messages, but you can request those receipts, as I mentioned. So this is your delivery receipt, and here is your read receipt. That means that they're going to have to check a box to say that they actually read your item. And then finally, you can delay delivery, and you can redirect replies wherever the heck you want. One last little thing that I absolutely love, if you've ever sent anything and you said, hey, see attachment, and then has anybody ever done this? Guilty. Uh, you just press send, and then you sent this email with no attachment. Oh, my gosh, and now you look like an idiot. Well, Outlook has you covered. As long as you spell attachment correctly and you press send, you're going to get a pop-up that says, hey, you may have forgotten to attach a file, and you're like, thank you so much, Outlook. That's fantastic. But in this case, I'm going to send anyway. So there it goes. That's how easy it is to send and compose an email. Uh, I'm going to check in with questions, and then I will move on to mail, or I'm sorry, calendars in a second. And you can see I'm getting some pop-ups here for when I actually receive email, so that's kind of fun. All right, will WashU directory be included? Oh my gosh, so this is one of the best parts of the switch is yes, that WashU directory will be included uh, and then let me see here, or will we have to create contacts? No, you will not have to create those contacts. What I do want to make you uh, aware of is that if you've been logging in uh, with your WashU account, uh, you'll no longer do that. Make sure that you're logging in using your three letters, four numbers, followed by at bjc.org, and again, you'll have that directory available to you. Probably one of the biggest drivers for us moving to Outlook 
obviously was our uh, relationship with WashU. And additionally, if you think about uh, the fact that probably most hospital systems use Outlook, it's just going to make things easier for communication across the board. So it's good stuff. Great questions. Again, keep those coming. You can chat me up, Nick Carson. All right. So now we've seen how to actually send some email. Uh, let's talk about how you can read your email, and that's pretty straightforward, right? So if I have uh, this item highlighted and I have my reading pane, I can obviously look here and see my uh, uh, email as it lives. To reply from here, I can reply within the reading pane. I can reply at the top of the screen. There's even more cool things that you can do up here. So I can create quick steps. So if I just want to forward this to my manager, I can do that with a quick step and just click one button and I'm good to go. I can reply and delete. So for those of you who love to keep your email clean, you can do that. And even better, you can create new options for quick steps. So much functionality, so little time. I wish I could show you all of it, but you can do a bunch of stuff with quick steps. It's super cool. In this move section, I can click and drag items into my folders or I can move them using these buttons. If you're familiar with OneNote, and I haven't mentioned this yet, Outlook is seamless with one or with one note which makes sense because it's Microsoft Office product there's so much that you can do with that we'll have classes around that later this fall additionally throughout the system you'll see categorizing so as i said all of your categories and colors will go away you have to create your new ones which you can see i've done that already and it's pretty easy you just come into all categories and you can start creating your own in fact it looks a lot like groupwise as i said before as well you can find follow up everywhere so here's another spot for it now let's say that you didn't have this reading pane, you don't like it. Uh, I can double click on this email and then it will open and you get all those options across the top again. Okay. When you double click on it, it's going to mark it as red, but again, nobody's spying on you to find out if it's red or not. Uh, to really be a black belt in this, I would encourage you to check out right clicking. Because once I start right clicking on my messages, I don't have to hunt and peck through the ribbon. It's all right here for me, right in front of me. So I can do all of those things directly here. And getting emails in real time, don't judge. All right, <laughs> so that is, and let me double check to make sure I've covered everything that we need when it comes to mail. Views, options, sending, organizing, yes. Otherwise, that is going to be everything that I can show you today when it comes to mail. I'm going to double check, make sure that we have any other questions. Uh, will I still have access to my external email addresses that I have stored on my personal address list folder? Yes. Isn't that exciting? So whatever your personal contacts are that you have in GroupWise today, they will migrate to Outlook. So if you have something even labeled as my team, my team will come over. I'll show you that in a moment when we actually get to people. You'll see all of my different lists that I had in GroupWise that are now in Outlook. So that's good news. Good questions. All right, I'm going to switch gears and we're going to go to calendar. And again, to do that, I can do control two or I can click on calendar down at the bottom of my screen. When I click on calendar, it's going to bring me to my calendar, and you guys are seeing my real-time calendar. How exciting. Uh, across the top, we have all the same different tabs, but a lot of different stuff within. And when it comes to views, there's a lot of things you can do. And what I really like about Outlook is that let's say you're stuck inside all day. Well, at least I know it's beautiful outside today. It's beautiful outside tomorrow. And when Friday comes around, I'll know what the weather is on Saturday. How fantastic. And I can view this a number of different ways. So I can look at work week. I can look at my week. I can look at a month. I can even just look at today or your schedule view, which breaks it out by hour. How awesome. Additionally, if you're needing to look at other people's calendars, that functionality is going to be available to you. You can open up anybody's calendar depending on how much information they give you. Now, in GroupWise, it was really hard because you had to get this proxy access and all that to even kind of look at their calendar, or maybe you went through busy searches to get an idea of what's going on in their calendar. And here, you can open up anyone's calendar. It won't give you a whole lot of details around it unless you have that access, but at least you can look at it quickly. Even better than that, you can create calendar groups. So for instance, over here in the left under my folders window, which again I can collapse, in my folders window I have this team calendar set up. So check this out. When I click on team, this is going to show me everybody's calendar right now today. And I like looking at it in day view. So here's my calendar. It takes a second to load as you're noticing, but once it does, it gives me a quick overview of what's going on in everybody's day. That's pretty fantastic. I absolutely love it. And if I want to remove people from this list, I can just X out, and it's going to remove those folks from my list and condense down to the people that I want to see. Or I can uncheck them over here. Pretty neat either way. allows you to view a lot of different things in a lot of different ways. So that's kind of great. Uh, when it comes to sharing your calendar, you can do that by clicking Share Calendar. You can think of this almost like your proxy access. 
I click on share calendar, it's going to allow those people to look at my calendar, but I can also request permission to look at theirs at the same time. So you can see how getting up and running and viewing other people's schedules can be pretty fast. Uh, as long as you utilize this option. It's kind of fun. And then depending on how much you want people to see, you can use calendar permissions. And in here you'll set just how much uh, you allow individuals to see when they're on your list. All right, that's a lot of stuff, but let's talk about how to actually make an appointment. To make an appointment, you'll click on new appointment. But here's where Microsoft gets a little fishy. It says new appointment, and then we also have new meeting. And you're like, wait, what's the difference between those two? Well, an appointment is going to be when it's just you. So if it's just something you're putting on your, scale, on your calendar, then it is an appointment. If you're inviting other people or you're using rooms, that's going to be a meeting. But I'm going to show you, you probably don't have to worry too much about it because I'm going to click on new appointment to show you how to do this. And from here I can put whatever subject I want. I can put whatever I want in the body. You can put in signatures. You can attach items. You can do all that fun stuff. I can show this as busy free, working from elsewhere. There's a lot of different options you have available to you. I can put reminders on this. By default, I believe they're going to give you 15-minute reminders no matter what. What I found is that when I went through the migration, if I had reminders in GroupWise, those did not carry over. So you definitely want to keep an eye on that so that way you can have those things. And here's the other bummer, at least for me, where I'm like, ah, oh, maybe I'm a GroupWise person, is that recurrences, if you've ever used that custom recurrence, that goes away. Now it actually has to be a recurring appointment. So every week on a certain day at a certain time, it has to be set up that way. That's kind of a bummer, but again, the, the pros far outweigh way the cons. If you ever got confused by time zones, I got you covered here as well, and you can categorize mark, mark as private and assign importance. Now, let's say that I'm feeling pretty lonely. I want to change this appointment to a meeting. It's really simple. All I have to do is click on invite, invite attendees, and when I do, you'll see that now it says meeting. Yay, and this works just like your emails. And to pull up your, uh, and I neglected to mention this too, to look at your uh, directory, you can click on to or you can go to address book very similar functionality across all email, email platforms. But from here, I can write out a name, press enter, works just like your email did. This is where I get super excited about this, is that over here you'll see that there's a room finder. So it's saying, hey, these are days that may not be great for finding a room. These are good days. So it's already giving me some options, as well as suggested times as to when both of us are available. But if you weren't excited, get ready to be really excited because with this upgrade, everyone gets an assistant. What? Yes, we get a scheduling assistant, but when you look at it, you'll see it looks just like a busy search, and that's what the functionality is. So on here, I have my scheduling assistant, which shows me uh, everybody's schedule who I've invited to this meeting. I'm going to show you this a couple times. If I want to find the next best available time slot, what I'll do is go to Options, choose Auto Pick, and then It'll look for all people and resources. One thing I want to highlight here is that you can also make people required, meaning that you have to find a room for this person and uh, maybe a couple other people, and those people are required. It will look for those required individuals first. It's good stuff. Uh, if I go to all people and resources, again, that's going to show me my next available time slot. So here it is on uh, today around 4.30. Again, options, auto pick, all people and resources, it's going to show me my next available time slot. So that's kind of fantastic. Even in here, I can add additional resources or people. So if I need to find a room or add people, I can do that from here. Now, once you're finished, I could click send if I wanted to. In this case, uh, I could return back to my appointment as well and change anything from here. So all that's available to you. I'm sure Kristen does not want this appointment, so I'm not going to send it to her right now. But once I'm ready, I'm going to send this thing out the door. I'm going to get a pop-up that says, hey, you don't have a room. Eh, that's fine. I'm going to send it anyway. But that's how you create an appointment or a meeting. I'm going to check in on questions real quick. Mm -mm, no, no new questions. Good stuff. All right. Otherwise, that is going to be all the time I have to give you for calendars. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do from here. I'm going to take about a minute or two to cover people and tasks, mainly because it's not that complicated. But people, this is where you're going to find all of those custom created uh, contact list. So for me, I train emotional intelligence and I email those folks. So these are all things that I've pulled over from GroupWise. Uh, from here, there's a number of different views that I can take when I'm looking at these things. Uh, and you can view them however the heck you want. To create a new contact, it's pretty straightforward. Click on new contact and fill out as much or as little information as you want. You can obviously create me meetings or email people from this contact if you want. To create groups, it's pretty simple. Click on new contact group. Add members, name your group, and you're finished. 
Otherwise, you want to make sure to save and close. But again, that's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to spend too much of our time showing you all the ins and outs of that. Uh, you'll see that once you migrate, though, you will get a lot of different contact groups, which can be somewhat confusing. So make sure you come in there and you take a look at who's in those lists, and you can move those around if you need to. Oh, all right, making making mess. All right, uh, finally, I'm going to move on to tasks. I love tasks. There's so much that you can do here. Uh, overdue tasks show up as red, so you can see I'm behind on my TPS reports. I really need to get in and make sure I take care of those. But to create a new task, I'll click on New Task, and then you can put in your subject. You can put in your body. And what I like about this is that you can even uh, send status reports. So if somebody assigned you a task, you can let them know how things are going. A lot of cool functionality available here. I would encourage you to either to Google it or attend our classes. You can, you can check it out. Otherwise, once I save and close, you'll see that my new task is now listed up here according to the amount of information I gave. All right. Otherwise, that brings us through all of the client version of Outlook. Uh, quick question before we switch into OA. If you invite a room in your appointment, will it automatically pop into the location in the appointment? Yes. So those are going to work interchangeably. So you may have noticed that uh, one of them said two, the other says rooms. Uh, you can put the rooms in the two box and those are going to pop up that location in your scheduled appointment and or meeting. Great questions, Lori. Keep them coming. Uh, can you transfer an email into a task list? Yes. So you can convert emails into appointments as well as tasks. So go to questions. If you're not sure what that means, again, you can Google it or attend our classes. All right. I only have 10 minutes to show you OA, and honestly, it's more than enough time because you're going to see that OA looks just like our client version. So I'm going to hop into OA, and I'm doing that through Chrome. So what I've been told is that your best experience is through Chrome, but I've also been on Internet Explorer and didn't really have any problems. Uh, let me get logged in. Come on now. Once I log into uh, OWA, you'll see this looks very familiar, right? So here's my mail, my calendar, my people, and my tasks. The only difference is that these are actually treated as separate applications. Ooh, I'm getting reminders. Everybody hear that? Beautiful sound. Uh, so reminders also work on OA. It's going to tell you all those things directly from the online version too, which is pretty cool. I'm going to dismiss all those for now though. So let's jump into mail and let me show you all the fun stuff that you can do for shooting out emails and reading emails and all that good stuff. First I want to point out uh, that this is very consumer friendly. You're going to see there's a lot of things on here that seem kind of strange for a business, uh, but they are definitely aimed towards consumers. Now, when I click on any of my emails, it's going to highlight, and you'll see here's my reading pane, here's my contents, and here are my folders. Oh my gosh, does that look familiar or what? I can change any of those display settings by coming over here to the settings, and there should be an option. And honestly, this is throwing me for a bit of a loop because this looks a little different than what I've been uh, used to seeing. So that's kind of exciting. So we've been making some changes. But you'll see display settings are here, and I can change any of those settings as I desire. And again, all of this is pretty customizable when it comes to your views. All right, so let's actually get into shooting out an email. Uh, across the top, we'll see all of our menu options. Up here, you'll find New. When I click on New, this is where it's going to appear. And what I love about this is that check names thing is no longer an issue. When I click on To, it's automatically saying, hey, you emailed these people. Maybe you want to email them now. And I say, yes, I do. So it's automatically inserting uh, suggested people that you might want to email. Uh, as I type out names, you'll see that they start popping up. Uh, if I were to find somebody who's not in there, if I just press enter, you'll notice it says search directory. What it's doing is checking names. So in this case, it's saying, hey, nobody with that name exists. That would be a hard one to pronounce anyway. So there you go. So there are the different ways that you can do this. Um, I can add a subject. I can add the body of my note. And what I want to point out is that you can change any of your text, but even more fun than that, emojis. So like, oh my gosh, it's rainy outside. Let's remember that we're professionals, so please do not use emojis if you're communicating professionally. Obviously, if you're within your team or something like that, that's kind of fun, but again, less is more. Uh, from here across the top, I'll see here's where I can send. You also have those options across the bottom. Here's where you can attach and do some other things. Uh, I want you guys to get familiar with these three dots. That's going to be additional options available to you. So I can save as a draft. I can show the from. I can check names. I can set importance. You can do a lot of stuff from this menu option, including request that read receipt. So if you're really wanting to do that, you can do that from more options. So get familiar with those three dots. You'll see that every now and again. Otherwise, once I'm ready to send, I'll just click send on either location. It does not matter. And it's going to send this thing out the door. And I'm getting messages saying, oh my gosh, you have a new email. How fun is that? 
Okay, across the top, if I want to read these emails, obviously if I highlight, you'll see your read. What I really enjoy is that they have this like button. How funny. It's like, I like your email. Very consumer-based, kind of silly. But you'll see I have the options for reply. What I want to make sure you guys are aware of is that that reply option is reply all by default. So you may want to change your default setting to reply as opposed to reply all because that's just leading towards big problems. So make sure you come in and change your default to reply. Otherwise, you can see all the other options that you have available from this drop down. A lot of stuff that you can do from here. If you don't like that reading pane, no worries. You can double click on your messages and it will open up and then I can reply all over the place from here as well. Similar functionality. All right. Across the top, I want to go through this menu option. So we saw the new. You can also create calendar events within your mail, so that's kind of nice. You can delete, you can archive, you can mark as junk. Your delete, or, I'm sorry, your archive folder will live over here in your folders. You can mark as junk. This sweep sounds kind of nice, but it's not. It's very scary. Uh, be careful with sweep because you will, uh, you run the risk of deleting all messages that are in your in inbox. Yikes, right? So that's definitely a consumer-focused button. Uh, I like to think of it as the get rid of my ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend button. So that way you can get rid of messages from an individual if you like. So be careful with sweep. It can be very, very scary. So make sure you don't mess around with that. And then as I mentioned, you can move things into folders uh, using move to or clicking and dragging. And all of your categories are also going to come over. And again, don't forget these three dots. They give you lots of options. But just like the client version, I love right-clicking. And when I right click, I get all those options from my contents window. All right, let me check in on questions real quick. Oh, we got a few. Uh, let's see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's see. We did the task, invite a room. Uh, can you delete frequent contacts if you have five different Smiths and you only want one to pop up when you start type, typing T-O? Yes. Absolutely you can. So you'll go into your people folder and you'll find there's actually a folder labeled uh, frequent contacts where you can make edits if you want to. So great question. Uh, will work in progress emails transition over? Ooh, I think you have stumped me. That's a great question. I'm assuming that if you save it as a draft, it will come over. Uh, that is a definite I don't know answer, but that is my guess is that yes, as long as you have it saved as a draft, it will. Uh, come across, but I will put that as a question and follow up, and you'll see that on the FAQs. Good questions. All right. Down to six minutes. Don't worry, we're fine. Uh, so I'm going to switch gears from mail and look at calendar. The way that we do that is by going up here to what's called the app launcher, and that app launcher will move depending on the size of your window. So it's this one that looks like lattice work. When I click on that app launcher, it's going to show me all the different applications, and I can just jump straight to calendar. From here, I have all my different views as well, so I can change these to be whatever the heck I want. You can see all of my calendars all live here just like they did before. I can create new calendar uh, groups, etc. I can share my calendar. You can do all that functionality that we saw in, uh, in the client version. I like that you can print here. It's a lot easier than in the client version. Uh, and again, you get your weather and all that fun stuff. To create new appointments, I can just click on new, or you can click and drag on here. Uh, but otherwise, you can see it's pretty straightforward, right? But I can put in the title of whatever it is. I can add rooms. Uh, I can put the start end times. You still get emojis, so that's fun. Yay. And if I want to change this appointment into a meeting, I love it that they call it a calendar event because that makes a lot more sense to me. You can just start adding people over here. And that's where they'll live. And same deal with rooms, that if I were to add a room, I could put that in here. And you get to keep your scheduling assistant. So it's all pretty fantastic. And you can request that they respond to that they're going to attend or not. So it's good stuff across the board. It's good. It's great. It's fantastic. Uh, I can put in attachments. This add-ins we're not really going to use. Again, that's more consumer focused, as well as these charms. So if you're like, I love cake, I guess you could put that on there. It doesn't really mean anything, but that's, that's what it is. There it is. There's charms. Uh, and you also have your categories. Once you're finished with your appointment, you can click on save, and now that item will live on your calendar, and you can see there's where my charm is. Oh, and I get my beautiful sounder saying that here is my thing. I've got reminding me. Okay, so there you go. So that is uh, a lot of the stuff that's available to you on your calendars. Again, that functionality is pretty good. I'm going to check questions, and then I'm going to use the last couple minutes to uh, go over tasks and people. All right. 
Will OneNote be in App Launcher? Ooh. On Office 365, I don't know the answer to that, but my assumption is no because we are not on Office 365 yet. Uh, I would imagine that eventually BJC might make that change, but honestly, I'm speaking on a turn. I have no idea. Uh, but if, uh, I will put down the OneNote question about the App Launcher. Uh, my gut response here is that no, you're not going to find that in there because we are using the actual application that should be loaded on your uh, device. Uh, let me just jot that down. Uh, the next question, I currently use my personal email address for OneNote, but would love to use my BJC account. Mm, I see. So I'm not sure how that will function either. My assumption is that you're going to probably have access to OneNote, and then I'm not sure how OneNote sharing happens, that you may be able to look at your personal. Not 100% on that one, so sorry. Is there a max number of emails you can have open or about to send or reading at the same time? Wow, uh, probably, but I'm assuming that it's such a large number that you may never ever get there. Uh, I've had a lot of emails open and I haven't had anything that says, oh my gosh, you've had too much stuff open. In fact, if you have dual screen, I'm going to jump back to the application really quick. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with your view. So for instance, if I just want to have my tasks in a separate folder, you can open new window, and now my tasks are separate from uh, my other uh, mail. So if you have multiple windows open, you can do that. So I'm assuming that you're not going to get any messages. You'd have to have a lot of stuff open uh, for that to come up, but no, I don't think you're going to run into that problem. All right. Last little bit on OA. Again, to move around in your applications, you'll click on the App Launcher. I'm going to go to People. I'm not even going to spend any amount of time in here. I just want to show you it's exactly the same. So I can create a new contact, or I can create a new contact list. You can do all that from OA. You can edit delete lists. You can find information in your directory, my contacts, et cetera. You're going to find all that same information. So there are your people. And then finally, tasks in OA. I like it much better. It's a lot more uh, streamlined from what you saw before in the client version. And here's my subject. Here's what i got to finish. And if I want to put more details, all I have to do is click show more details, and it gives me all these options. And I can even add attachments. I like dogs. I don't know. There you go. You can uh, do all of that, and once you're finished, you can save, and now that item is going to live in your task list on OA. So that leaves us one minute. Oh my gosh, can you believe that hour flew by that quickly? So I'm going to check on any of my chat. Max number, will the room availability just show you what your specific location? For example, oh, this is a fantastic question. I'm sorry I didn't mention this. So uh, as you guys make your migrations, your rooms will transfer with you. So for instance, if you're trying to book a room, uh, at the BLI right now, the only way you're going to be able to do that is if, you're on, if you are on Outlook. So I would encourage you to outreach the people who are at those buildings. Otherwise, uh, your rooms will transfer with you. So room availability is going to be available once you actually make your switch. And once we're all on the Outlook, then it will work very similarly to what we had in GroupWise. I hope that answers your question. Last little bit, make sure you turn in your questions because I'll return to those in a moment. The last little bit I want to remind you guys is, again, go to that bjclearn.org backslash Microsoft help. All the documents that I've covered today are on this page, including client OA migration details. You can get that full three-hour class. You can get all kinds of good stuff on here. And if, again, if I was too fast for you, don't worry. You can pause me and just watch this process. Otherwise, I'm going to check questions one last time. So somebody's leaving me, uh, and I think that is it for our chats. If you have additional questions, don't be afraid to uh, shoot me an email. Again, my name is Nicholas Carson. I can't guarantee that I'll answer all your questions. If they're actual troubleshooting, please call the help desk. But if it's questions around your migration, just let me know. Otherwise, you guys have been fantastic. Uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Make it a great one, and I will see you soon. Take care.